With all the hype around AI tools right now, this is one of the few videos that I found that actually had a realistic view on what AI tools can and cannot do. In the previous two videos, we looked at the abilities, but also the limitation of common AI tools like ChatGPT, Claude, and GitHub Copilot. However, if you look around, AI seems to be the total hype right now. People saying it's going to replace programmers, it's going to take our jobs. And just to balance the viewpoint here a little bit, I want to react to his video here because I very much agree with a lot of what he has to say. There's this tweet from Gary Tan, and so he's reacting to a post that was made on Reddit, feeling very powerful as a technical founder with Claude Sinet 3.5. It's mind-blowing how quickly I can move. I'm pretty sure I could implement copies of the technical parts of most popular apps in the App Store 10 times as fast as I could before LLMs. I still need to make architectural and infrastructure decisions, but stuff like programming the functionality of a UI component is 10 times faster now, and this results in such fast iteration speed. And they outline the steps to do that. I think they're completely right when it comes to like code snippets and like small pieces of code. LLMs have been pretty good and it seems like they're improving. Claude is even better now. Now we've got some people that are actually questioning this because what exactly are you guys coding or is anybody coding where LLMs are making the work 10 times as fast? It's baffling to me. I've been using them the last couple of years, just like everybody else. And I feel like I'm pretty familiar with their limitations. Most people that I've talked to that have actually used AI tools tell me the exact same thing. It's good for code snippets. It's good for small functions. But if you want to use AI to write an entire program for you or understand a larger Git repository, that is something that AI simply cannot do at this point. So the people that I see raving about AIs are either people who have never actually used them or who are at such a beginner level that they don't really understand what they're seeing when they get code from AI tools. And I made a response to this. I just don't understand. Am I not doing it right? Anytime I need to accomplish something of medium difficulty, LLMs waste my time because for complex tasks, they just don't know what they're doing. I've tried. Like, this is not something I'm making up. It's from experience. Using them for snippets is fine. But who's writing their entire app or even designing their entire app with the help of LLMs? If you remember two videos ago, we built a snake game and an electron cloud simulation with ChatGPT, Claude, and GitHub Copilot. And while we could get it to work at some point, it still needed multiple iterations to get code that was actually working. And building Snake and an Electron Cloud simulations are not that complicated to begin with. If you're building something so simple that you don't need to write a quick doc or list out edge cases yourself or even design the major trade-offs, then maybe, sure. That was my hypothesis. And... It's from experience. And I said, I would love to watch a non-technical person create Neat Code IO. And my site is actually pretty simple. I would love to watch somebody create it. And so many people saw this as a challenge and some people disagreed with me. Have you tried Claude? It absolutely shits on GPT-4.0. As I mentioned, we use Claude and GPT-4.0 both for Snake and the Electron Cloud Simulation. While Claude was definitely better than GPT-4.0, it wasn't that much better. But this person, they took time out of their day to actually try it out. The first screenshot they sent though was not promising. They're using Devon AI. Whoa, guys, now I'm nervous. Devon AI, it's definitely going to put me out of business pretty soon. If you've never heard or used Devon AI, there's a reason for that. And there's also a reason I didn't include Devon in my videos. There was a lot of hype around it, but at the end of the day, it's just a wrapper around ChatGPT. So in the back end, it's still using ChatGPT. It just prompts it multiple times. It can look up documentations online. It can actually run its own code. And when it runs into errors, it will reprompt ChatGPT. So from the looks of it, it actually looks quite good. And it actually has some functionality that I would like GitHub Copilot to have to run its own code and then correct itself. But in practice, it absolutely does not live up to the hype. And if you want to know more about that, I recommend watching this video. I'll link it in the description. I said looking forward to it, especially the code sandbox functionality, which I honestly thought he was going to get closer than he did. So they said, OK, I got pretty far after some prompting and they did this in a day. This is how far they got. It's not pretty, but like the main functionality looks like it's there, right? I don't know why there's a progress bar on the home page. My site did not have that, but hallucinations are a thing. And so there's a bunch of pages. 
is. And it looks like the content is kind of there. But first of all, it's all skeleton. Like nothing is implemented. Not a single thing. Not even the problem list from Neatcode.io. There's a list of problems that you can mark complete. And that's basic CRUD functionality. I would not consider that a medium difficulty task. So that is not done at this point. So this is just an ugly UI skeleton. And one major thing I noticed is I can't even get to the homepage anymore. There's no button to get back to the homepage. Nice. Wow. Okay. Uh, this roadmap feature, right? Wow. AI did this. It doesn't really do anything right now, but look at mine. It's not about the functionality, the feature parity, but this is very different from this one. You're probably thinking, okay, well, it got you like 50% of the way there. However you want to calculate it. it got you pretty close at the very least AI was able to save time. But the problem is I don't think this component is even compatible. I don't think a human would be able to fix this and make it like mine or even close to mine with a progress bar with actual functionality, making it movable. So the problem with that is this will have to be rewritten from scratch, right? It's not a bug fix. It will have to be re implemented from scratch. So it looks like AI in this particular case, didn't save time, it wasted time. This is a very important point. So if you're thinking, well, even if AI doesn't get me to the final result that I want, at least it can get me halfway there and then I can take it from there. In a lot of cases, you will have to completely rewrite the code. So you will waste time with AI tools if you use them improperly or if you hope they do more than they can do. It's not compatible. It's gonna have to be rewritten from scratch and it's been a day and I think they gave up. I don't think they're going to keep trying. If they do, I'll update you guys. But again, why are people making vastly exaggerated claims? And this isn't even close to the most difficult part of the app. Like even the front end component, it couldn't build. How is it possibly going to build like a full stack functionality like this, where like you actually have a lot of things going on. Even for me, handling all these edge cases was a pain in the ass. And you don't think I tried to use GPT or the other LLMs to help me do it. Of course I did, but the hard part had to be solved by me. That's exactly the thing. AIs can help you with simple tasks, writing functions, something like give me the Fibonacci sequence or give me quicksort or something that the AI has been trained on. It can give you that relatively quickly and robustly. However, as soon as things get complicated, as soon as you need something that the AIs haven't explicitly been trained on, it's up to you. To do that but this just in my opinion shows that if you want to build something impressive now you have to be even better because all the really trivial easy stuff that's just ui and doesn't handle a lot of edge cases can actually be automated by llms the very trivial stuff can now be automated by them which is another reason to actually get good at what you do i genuinely do not think in five years llms will be able to recreate something like this without significant human intervention. I don't want to make any predictions as to when AIs will be able to do what, but if you just look at the development of the last two years, so when ChatGPT 3.5 came out, it was very impressive what it could do. Then GPT-4 was a little better, so that was like 10, 20% improvement over GPT 3.5. But since then, GPT-4.0 isn't that much better. Claude now is a little bit better, but it seems like we're plateauing. And this seems to be independent on how these models were trained because Claude is trained very differently than ChatGPT and also Meta's new Llama model. I've seen preliminary tests of that. Coding wise, it also has more or less the same functionality as the other two while being trained very differently than ChatGPT and Claude. And they all seem to level off at the same level. So it's almost like there's some invisible ceiling that none of these AI models can break through. That might be because while the algorithms are different to train these models, the training data is largely the same. So it might be because of that, but we'll discuss that more in the next video. I just had to get this off my chest because I just don't agree. I just feel like I'm living in a different universe from all these people on Twitter. Yeah. I'm glad he made this video because with all the AI hype out there, it can even be discouraging to learn programming. Some people said, well, because of AIs, I didn't even bother learning programming because I thought they can do everything. So I don't need to learn or my job will be replaced in the future. So I didn't get into computer science. At least as of right now, it doesn't look like our jobs are 
in any kind of danger, especially as a scientist or as an engineer where all our data sets are kind of unique. So it's not some standard data that the AIs were trained on. Every programming problem I had to solve in science had some peculiarities to it that needed a little bit of thought, a little bit of creative problem solving. And this is simply something the AIs cannot do at this point. So don't get discouraged from learning programming. I will soon create a course on how to best use AI tools to help you learn programming because that is something AI tools can do very well. And in that course, we're only going to leverage the strength of the AI tools.